five most influential people in 2022. First, Kevin Samuels, The Godfather. Relationship advisor, exposing women unrealistic expectations. Counterpart, but because she has an office job, she has the nerve to look down on you and guys like you while she's in tens of thousands of dollars of debt. Happens all the time. Why, sisters? Why? 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 Why do you have such disdain for blue collar men? It ain't it ain't how the men look at each other. Let's also answer these questions. Blue collar men, white collar men can't do shit without blue collar men. That's why we respect them. Blue collar men have, in my experience, tend to have more class than a lot of white collar women. Oh shit. Why? Because far too many white collar women are so rude, so disrespectful, so contemptuous, so contentious with how in which they handle blue collar men. We're pushing this no, no, no standard, no nothing. And you can do that. But at the end of the day, men are the consumers and men aren't buying it. Because see, here's the thing. You can be an average, acute-looking woman. And and years ago, you could have got a man, a husband. A, but now when you are trying to put on someone else's hair, uh, put on some, even if you don't do that, but just the, the weight is doing a lot, man. Okay. Mm-hmm. So from your personal experience, if you're advising a young woman who wants to be married, what are some of the things that men are looking for in a woman if they're desiring long-term marriage and relationship? Um, well, one of the biggest thing is outside of the weight, the fitness. Fitness has, fitness is just a standard requirement of all men. Um, like you said, don't confuse short-term access with long-term commitment. When I talk about getting a high-value man, I even try to turn it to getting a high-value husband because that people are equating the two. Then the second one, this one's going to hurt. No children. Fifty-one uh, percent of black men are single and childless. Sixty-four percent of them are in the middle class. We've been told that you know all these all these other things, but if a man doesn't have children, he doesn't want to necessarily raise another man's children. I say, ladies, understand. Women tell men what you think they deserve by your looks and your weight. So, what do you tell a men they think what you think they deserve? So, the looks, the lack of children, and then. Here's the other thing. They talk, we talk about femininity, beauty, inspiration, all that. Really, it's cooperation. Second. Jordan Peterson. Psychologist. Known to be cultural and political conservative. How do I make myself into the perfect date? You answer that question, and you will not have any problem answering the previous question. It's like, what do I want in a partner? Mm -mm. If I offered everything I could to a partner, who would I be? You work on that. Ask that question. Just ask. Just ask yourself, okay, I have to be the person that women would want. Hmm. Okay, what do they want? Clean. That's not a bad start. Reasonably good physical shape. So healthy. Productive. Generous. Honest. Willing to delay gratification. So you dance with a woman. It's like, what's she doing? What are you two doing? Well, it's a pattern. There's patterns happening around you. That's the music. Patterns. Patterns of being. That's the music. Now, can you align yourself with the patterns of being gracefully? That's what she's checking out. And then can you do that with her? And then can you do that in a playful and attentive manner and keep your bloody hands to yourself for at least a minute? And so can you dance in a playful manner? It's like you can go through this in your imagination and you know, you'll know. And then you think, well, how far am I from those things? And the answer is usually, man, it's a pretty horrible abyss separating you from that ideal. But the harder you work on 
offering other people what they need and want, the more people will line up to play with you. So it's the wrong question. It's like, how can I be the best partner possible? And then you think, well, if I do that, people will just take advantage of me. And that's the non-naive objection, right? Because the naive person think, well, I'll be good and everyone will treat me right. It's like the cynic says, no, I'll be good and someone will take me out. And then you think, well, what do you do about that objection? And the answer is, well, you factor that in. And that's why you're supposed to be, what is it? As soft as a dove and as wise as a serpent. It's like, I know you're full of snakes. I know it. Maybe I know it more than you do. Third, Putin. Russia president, challenging the West, wants to balance world power. агрессивной антироссийской политики Запад перешел всякую грань. Мы постоянно слышим угрозы в адрес нашей страны, нашего народа. Некоторые безответственные политики на Западе не только говорят о планах по организации поставок в Украине дальнобойных наступательных вооружений, систем, которые позволят наносить удары по Крыму, другим регионам России. Такие террористические удары, в том числе и с использованием западного оружия, уже наносятся по приграничным населенным пунктам Белгородской и Курской областей. В ход пошел и ядерный шантаж. Речь идет не только о поощряемых Западом обстрелах Запорожской атомной электростанции, что грозит атомной катастрофой, но и о высказываниях некоторых высокопоставленных представителей ведущих государств НАТО о возможности и допустимости применения против России оружия массового поражения, ядерного оружия. Тем, кто позволяет себе такие заявления в отношении России, хочу напомнить, что наша страна также располагает различными средствами поражения, а по отдельным компонентам и более современными, чем у стран НАТО. И при угрозе территориальной целостности нашей страны для защиты России и нашего народа мы, безусловно, используем все имеющиеся в нашем распоряжении средства. Это воронка от падения учебно-боевого блока ракеты «Сармат» просто поражает воображение. Без боевого заряда глубина 8 метров, диаметр 20. Andrew Tate, also known as the Top G, teaching men how to better themselves and understanding women. But I'll make an important point. You're talking about equality, equaling respect. The way you get respect as a woman is by being feminine. There's nothing. Uh, we can be equal and very, very different. I'm not saying that when there's not equality, but you've confused equality with the same. You can be equal equity. with completely different things. You can have a bishop and a knight on a chessboard. They're equal in terms of points, but they do different things, right? Mm -hmm. A woman can have equal respect to a man if she is very good at being a woman, and a man gets respect for being very good at being a man. When a woman decides she wants to act like a man or a man wants to act like a woman, that's where it all gets fucked up. We try to pretend yes. it's all the same. It's not the same. Men and women are good at different things. We have different strengths, different weaknesses. There's nothing wrong with accepting that. There's nothing wrong with saying, I'm a woman, I'm good at X, he's a man, he's good at Y. Then we work together as a team, we have a beautiful family, we're 
happy forever. It's only confused where you have women who sit and go, no, because in the name of equality, we can fight in war. There's no fucking women on the front line in Ukraine. That is psyop bullshit. They put some chick there dancing around doing Pokemon <laughs> dances to try and convince men to yeah, go fucking die in a ditch. It's garbage. If you go to the front line of Ukraine right now, you do not see women in their makeup and their manicures. You see fucking men in the freezing cold dying. You know where the women are? Dubai. Chilling. That's where the women are. So mm. to sit and pretend that women are just as capable physically as men is a fucking lie. It's delusion. To send that you're as strong as men is delusion. You are good no at way. other things. You're better than men at a lot of things, but it's not the physical world. And the unfortunate reality about life, this is what we're saying when I was saying earlier that feminism goes out the window when things get hard. The harder the world gets, it, the, it, the closer it gets to the baseline of humanity, the unfortunate baseline of, rea- of, re- of humanity is violence. Yeah. That's what happens. when if, if all the electricity were to go out and all the police were to quit, this would become a violent place very quickly, and there would be fucking zero feminists left. Zero. You would all need <laughs> men. That's the bottom line of reality. That's the bottom line. So you have to yes. understand as a woman and say, okay, no I need a man who's good it. at being a man. My nigga. <laughs> Fifth. Georgia Maloney. Italian Prime Minister. Known for preaching freedom of African countries that still under evil hands of France. Now, far from being some extremist that our mainstream media claim, Maloney is a deeply principled politician who has a habit of telling it like it is. Watch here as she explains how France continues to exploit poor African countries, which then adds to Europe's illegal immigration crisis. Questo. Questo è un bambino che lavora in una miniera d'oro in Burkina Faso. Il Burkina Faso è una delle nazioni più povere del mondo. Per il Burkina Faso che ha l'oro, la Francia stampa moneta coloniale. In cambio pretende che finiscano nelle casse del tesoro francese il 50% di tutto quello che il Burkina Faso esporta. L'oro che questo bambino si infila in un cunicolo per tirare fuori finisce per lo più nelle casse dello Stato francese. Allora la soluzione non è prendere gli africani e spostarli in Europa. La soluzione è liberare l'Africa da certi europei che la sfruttano e consentire a queste persone di vivere di quello che hanno. Sweet Mary Yay. Mother of God, oh, that sexy. woman She's is bright. magnificent. Oh. <laughs> she said, the solution is not to take the Africans and bring them to Europe. The solution is to free Africa from certain Europeans who exploit it. The left who pretend to care about poor people and the flood of illegal economic migrants into Europe should be making that precise same argument instead of making people smugglers rich and painting anyone who objects to illegal immigration as racist. 